while most of you are trying to watch a drive-in movie on my forehead right now, we are actually going to be talking about Buffalo Bills ideas for the wide receiver position in today's episode. Welcome to the Buffalo Bills and hashtag uh, sports offseason, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you know, all of our preliminaries, we got to tell you, you can find all of our stuff on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, to, today's show is sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes in association with Cryer Media. You guys can see all of our stuff over there coming up. We have our 32 in 32 coming up very soon. If some of you uh, are not familiar with that, that is we do 32 teams in 32 days talking about offseason, free agency, salary cap, and a bunch of different other things. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you, it'll be like just like a reference point for a lot of you guys with, oh, you know, how much cap do they have? How much cap do they have? And we will be updating it as the cap happens to um, change with a lot of those teams. How are you doing this morning, buddy? Hey, Mario, you look like a like a 2002 Herbal Essence commercial. <laughs> At least you didn't say I look like Scott Stapp again. That's, <laughs> it's, always a, it's always a win for me when that happens. You'll say it <laughs> So, like, everyone pretty much hit the panic button with the Buffalo Bills season yeah. ending the way it did and trying sure. to get more offensive production and stuff like that. And I know some names have been thrown around. Uh, Bills Mafia, Hunter Renfro is a name uh, that people have been throwing around. People have yeah. been saying, why don't you just draft one in the first round? And Paul, I can't take credit for this, guys. Paul comes up to me and he throws me a name. Paul's known for getting those sneaky guys. When you have cap trouble, he Paul's a good guy to have. You know, this guy has been very productive. He's played nine years in the, in the, in the league. Um, he has familiarity with a wide receiver currently on the Buffalo Bills squad. But I'm so curious to see what Hashtag Nation and Bills Mafia's take is on this. And just to let you guys know, yes, we will be in the car very, very soon. Okay, we, we usually wait for the entire season to be over because at this point, you know, you have... What's yeah, it? Things you know, you have a bunch so, of things yeah, going on. Yeah, things shift so much. Like, yeah, it, yeah, they, they, it does make sense just to wait to get in the car because we don't record every day in the car. You know, we'll no. record a whole week's worth of episodes in one day. So, no. uh, it's it is just best to wait right now. But yeah, I think I think we got to set the table a little bit, right? So yes. for for those worried about the salary cap, the bills have plenty of space that isn't being used right now. People are going to freak out. The salary cap went up. The bills are still over the salary cap. Don't yeah. worry about it. They can restructure restructure Josh. They th there's a lot that can go into that to to make all that happen. They'll restructure Vaughn. Like you, there's a lot. There's a have lot. Have you seen them though, Paul? Have you seen like on Twitter? Like everyone's like, "Hi guys, I restructured every deal." <laughs> the Buffalo Bills have. <laughs> they can open up seventy four million dollars. Like, right. Okay. First of all, guys, the player has to be willing to do that. Right. That's one of those things that you have to yeah. take into consideration. A player has to be willing to restructure. And like Paul has said in the past, and we've said on this channel quite a bit, a lot of players will agree the way that it works is you you transfer their base salary to a bonus and then you mm -hmm. prorate it over the length of the deal. And we'll right. explain all that. But the point is the player gets that money now. And when right. you don't have guaranteed contracts in the NFL, players are like, Yeah, I'll take that now. Put that in my right. bank account right now. So right. Yeah, exactly. And and as ironic as it is to bring up, unfortunately, restructuring a lot of contracts is like a Viking funeral where like you put everybody in the boat and then you push the boat out into the water and then you shoot arrows of fire at it until it basically explodes. That's what restructuring contracts is really like, is you're putting those players in a boat and you're pushing them out into the water and then you're just going to shoot fire arrows at them until until they uh, until that boat disappears. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of restructuring, but like with yes. Von Miller's contract and with Josh Allen's contract, it was by design for them to be restructured. But we'll go into that in in another episode um, for those thinking that the NFL draft is a great place to grab people uh, to fix your wide receiver problem. Because let's be honest, you got a wide receiver problem here mm -hmm. um, there. Most of your top 10 ranked wide receivers are five foot ten. Right. So that typical That's, player no. the target here. It's just not really there. There's some very nice players, but uh, I, I don't know if there's a Devonta Smith. I don't know if there's a Justin Jefferson, at least not in the early first round. Um, so we could talk about that again in another episode. So yep. Buffalo has been known to kind of try and find value elsewhere at the wide receiver position. And Mark, the veterans they brought in, right? So let's go back and let's roll back. Buffalo has had, had, 
had a tendency of trying to fix by veteran acquisition. Yes. Do you think that's something that after the last few years, they're going to continue to do? Because why don't you give me a couple of those names and let's talk about it. Immediate names that come to come to mind. Obviously, you have John Brown, Cole Beasley, and you have Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, and you know it seems it seems like the Buffalo Bills treat the wide receiver position as the cornerback position. We're just gonna keep dumping coins in the machine and mm-hmm. see what one hits. Right. You know it's it it, but I can understand when you have a young when you have a young nucleus. Like for example. You know, we talked about it quite a bit. You had a quarterback on the defense in Tremaine Edmonds. You had a quarterback on the offense in, in, mm-hmm. in Josh Allen. Bringing in those right. veteran wide receivers for Allen, you know, gets him to see the field as the receivers see the field because they've mm-hmm. been in the league. And right. I think that was a genius way to do it. The way that the, the, the format is that it seems like it's been, been working in the NFL is that if you have a young quarterback, you bring these vet wide receivers in to get them to learn the game. And then when it's time to pay that quarterback, Sometimes those veteran wide receivers go, and then you can bring a rookie in. You know, if you, if you look at the contrast of what the Buffalo Bills did with bringing Stephon Diggs in with Allen, you saw an immediate jump in, in his production. Conversely, the uh, I mean, you may not agree with this, and a lot of you may not agree with this, but the, the Vikings were willing to part ways with Stephon Diggs and take Justin Jefferson because they had right. a seasoned quarterback. Right. You look at Christian Watson, maybe with Aaron Rodgers. You know he didn't have a great start, but then the last like seven, eight games of the year, he—if you put a vet with a rookie in either co- in either way, you're going to work out. Right. So a lot of that translates. Like with with, with Tremaine Edmonds, they were they're always bringing in vet corners to try to tell him how to see the field, how to see a bunch of different things, mm-hmm. and you know with communication, you know, because it's so paramount over there. Right. But you know, you talk about Emmanuel Sanders. Um, at the point of his career, he wasn't really a guy that was going to stretch the field, but he could get open down the field. He stretched the field differently than, than Gabe Davis. I think what you saw was that Gabe Davis with Emmanuel Sanders was productive because it put him in that wide receiver three role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you had you had Emmanuel Sanders coming in and kind of showing him the ropes, how to do this, that, and the third. Right. With John Brown, John Brown was a vertical threat that wanted to open up you want to open up things underneath for Knox. You want to open up things underneath for Beasley. And Beasley is just a, just a savvy wide receiver, a slot guy that could just get open underneath and get you those first downs that you needed. And I think that's what it, – it hasn't been a failure. Even though the Buffalo Bills did not bring home a title, it, it's not a failure. Their offense was right. very productive and put up a lot of points using sure. that formula. Right. So I think they will continue that because – we didn't see the production that we, I think we wanted to out of Shakir, which he was a fifth round pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I think Shakir was the guy that is the, is the bridge. If you can't sign, re-sign Davis in the next couple of years, I think Shakir is that guy. Well, that bridges Gabe, that contract. Gabe Davis is walking into a contract year, right? Yeah. And the truth is, you know, without a player like example, Emmanuel Sanders uh, mm-hmm. really helped get Dawson Knox to be a very effective target when he was targeted. Right. Yes. And then you look at John Brown and Cole Beasley. Those were guys that were just available after the trade deadline. Yeah. Like that's that's what it was like. Once it was clear, Crowder was not coming back, which, again, Jamison Crowder was another coin in the slot machine. Right. Yes. So you really got to start looking at what fits Buffalo. And you already had mentioned Stefan Diggs uh, in talking about bringing in a young uh, wide receiver with a veteran uh, a young wide receiver with a vet quarterback. Well, the same could be said for what Minnesota did with Thielen, right? They let Diggs go to Buffalo, brought in Jefferson because they had Thielen, right? It mm-hmm. wasn't like they were, you know, putting all their eggs in one basket. It's not what happened. However, Adam Thielen is now 33 years old. There's absolutely no way that he plays on the contract that he's got. His contract guarantees, his base salary guarantees on March 17th, right? So Mm -hmm. on March 17th, his base salary becomes fully guaranteed, which means he's getting paid the whole thing. So Minnesota's got to decide what they do. Minnesota can get out of Adam Thielen with $6 million as far as a cap hit goes and just walk away, right? And I got to be honest with you, Thielen and Buffalo fits the absolute perfect scenario for the Bills. I got to be honest with you, Thielen and Buffalo fits the absolute perfect scenario for the bills you're going to get a player who's productive who's a dedicated wide wide receiver two at 33 years old it gives you the opportunity to sign gabe davis or not it gives you the opportunity to draft a receiver or not 
because you're going to sign Thielen to a two-year deal, probably a three-year deal with avoided uh, third year because that's what Bean seems to like to do. And you'll be able to get him for eight, ten million dollars. And Thielen and Diggs, you get get the band back together. Thielen and Diggs, and then Gabe Davis at three, Knox still at tight end. You're talking a very dangerous offense trying to exploit your window, right? Does it fix your long-term problems? Of course, absolutely not. Right. Mm-hmm. But I don't think this draft has that early wide receiver that's going to fix your problems. Like you got to go with what what you've been doing, because in theory, it was kind of the right move for a weaker wide receiver draft class. And and it continues to be the right move for a weaker wide receiver draft class, especially at 25. There's no yeah. guarantees that no. I mean, everyone likes to talk about Jefferson being at 22. Well, he's the fifth wide out taken off the board, guys. Right. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, and, and if that it was, was a redraft. huge wide receiver draft, right? Yeah, so, it was huge. Like that's why that's why trading for Diggs was such like some people hated it because it was the best wide receiver draft since uh, what was it, twenty fourteen? What what was the Sammy what Watkins the, draft? Oh yeah. God, yeah, that the was Watkins such a draft deep was one. stacked with wide receivers, mm-hmm. and this was the best wide receiver draft since then. And the Bills traded their first round pick for Diggs. It was like, what are you doing, right? But it made mm-hmm. sense. You needed to get that veteran wideout with a young quarter, with a young quarterback. Yes. You're past that now, right? Yeah. And now you have to look at, is this draft going to fit my needs? The answer is no. And the solution could be bringing in Adam Thielen because I really don't see Minnesota keeping him. They're like mad over the cap. like cra- They're like $20 yeah. million dollars over the cap that's already gone up. What I like about it is number one, it pushes, like you said, it pushes digs to the wide receiver three. So you're talking about acquiring, you know, reopening that relationship with Minnesota and acquiring right. Adam Thielen. If they decide to part ways with him, maybe you throw him a pick here, maybe throw him like a seventh in 2024 or something. Oh, like you that don't want something. that contract. You don't want the contract. I mean, you no. could trade for it, I guess. I mean, I, and you could trade for the contract. I, it's not going to kill you. Well, right? no, my, my point is this a lot of the things that are being talked about all over the place as far as how to help this wide receiver core you're either going to invest draft capital which you can invest in other places which you have to Mm -hmm. or you could if you want to make a move in free agency or get another player you're gonna have to sacrifice a player currently on your team i think the adam thielen deal to get him on this team and to get him to be a productive wide receiver too i don't think you have to move any other parts no, like, like yeah. for example, I, I think I seen it on on Twitter. It's like if you want to get Hunter Renfro, would would people trade Hunter Renfro for uh at Oliver? Because they yeah. their contracts are pretty much the same. You want to get that offensive production. Oliver hasn't done this. Whatever your opinion is, this way, if you get Thielen, you don't have to affect any other positions on your team right. immediately, and you could still be under the salary cap. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Minnesota's got a lot of problems with their contracts. They gotta they gotta get rid of a few pieces. They've got a bunch of players that are making over like fifteen million dollars as far as cap hit goes, and none of them are named Dalvin Cook. Bruh. Right, like Harrison yeah. Smith is like nineteen. Isn't you know, feeling you, the second highest paid player on the behind, team behind Cousins? Behind yeah. Cousins, wow. Right. So that's what I mean. Is you're looking at a thirty three year old Adam Thielen, and you're like, listen, you know, sorry. I, I'd love to see you retire here, but you either got to restructure or you got to go. And while they could restructure, right, the fact is they're going to ask him to give up his guaranteed salary, which is going to be fully guaranteed in March. Yeah. And if he calls their bluff and says no, they could cut him for a $6 million loss and just walk away from it. They could trade him for a bargain basement pick because, again, that contract's going to be a little bit yeah. of a problem for some folks. It will but, be. But the truth of the matter is he solves your immediate problem and then gives you time to figure it out. And, you know, yeah. Buffalo hasn't addressed the wide receiver position, I think, like a lot of people wanted to um, yeah. the last couple of years. And this draft isn't the one to do it in the first round either. Like, there's a couple nice players you'll be able to get on the second day. But, yeah. again, you're get their second day wide receivers. You're looking at a yeah. year-ish development. You got some stuff that isn't plug and play, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, feeling and digs together were dangerous. Now, they were. Granted, that was a while ago. Yeah, that, that was a while, was ago. A while but ago. Here's the here's why I like it, and it, for the reasons that you're stating as well is is it, okay. You're gonna get Adam Thielen pretty much for age 33 and age 34. Mm-hmm. Okay, 2023, 2024. Even if Bean took that contract, he can add another voidable year on top of it. Mm-hmm. You have the ne- the negotiation power as far as the Buffalo Bills go because Minnesota doesn't want that deal anymore. They can't no. sign any other other guys that they need because of that, and 
like you said, you're covering yourself in case Gabe Davis can't get can't get draft can't get signed. So if you don't sign Davis, you'll still have Thielen and Diggs, and uh, you know, and you Shakir, and you or you can draft bank. another guy. Right, but you are kind of banking on the development of Shakir, right? You, you can't, are. You but... can't depend on John Brown. You can't depend on Cole Beasley. These are not guys that are that are going to be major contributors on your 2023 roster. Bills fans don't want to hear that, but it's the no. truth. But the, what it, what I love about it for 2023, you know what it does? Hmm. It pushes Diggs to the slot. It can, right? Because you have two real outside receivers. Yes. Yeah. I think that's He's something dangerous that has, in there. As Bills fans, we got to come to grips with the fact that Stephon Diggs is, is getting older, and you have to look at the Larry Fitzgerald plan. Fitzgerald extended his career five years by moving into the slot. I can't. We can't do that, Paul. I, I love Diggs. But Fitzgerald was a, was a rare I'm animal. Time. I'm not saying full time. <laughs> I'm not saying full time. But Fitzgerald was a different that, kind of animal. Utilizing, I'm just utilizing him in the slot was a wise move, right? It was. It, it allows, was. Because everyone keeps talking up. about everyone keeps talking about the slot position. Like, mm-hmm. oh, is it going to be McKenzie? Is it going to be Beasley? Is it going to be Crowder? It, your best option at the slot is Diggs, guys. Right. And his feet and his route running ability and his knowledge of the game. Mm-hmm. He will be literally the most dangerous slot receiver in yeah, the NFL. Way easier to get Diggs 10, 12 targets from the inside than it is from the outside. Yeah, you and know, he doesn't like take crazy. a lot of pounding in there. Bruh. No. no, and then if you have a, a solid number two, as in Thielen, they have familiarity with each other, and you have Diggs on the other side, on the outside, and you put uh, you Davis. Knox. You Davis, Davis I'm side. sorry, yes. And then you put uh, Knox at tight end. Who's really going to contend with that? Well, it's funny, right? Because when you think about it, you got James Cook in the backfield, and then you got Diggs on the outside, <laughs> and talk about bringing it out of field. And again, people are going to say that you know Thielen is old, and yeah, you're right. You're but right. when you're looking at those veteran wide receivers, right? I'm looking for a guy that can come in, pull coverage that's dependable. Now, that, that was the thing about Gabe Davis was they, they, you're not, you're not going to bracket Gabe Davis, right? You're going to man up because he's not the fastest guy in the world. He's not exactly an outstanding route runner. Uh, had some focus issues, you know, with which catching the ball. You all you check all the boxes for Adam Thielen, right? Is he a burner? Nope. But is he faster than than Gabe Davis? He's probably not too much slower than Gabe. Is he a better route runner? Certainly, <laughs> right? Yeah. He doesn't have the you drop know? history though either. No, right. So like, really, when you have to pull back and and look, you know, Gabe Dave or uh, Adam Thielen hasn't played less than he played 66 percent of the snaps in 2021. He was hurt in 2021. He missed three games. Other than that, the 2020 and 2022, he played 85 and 89 percent of your snaps for Minnesota. Like this is, you know, he's a dependable guy that could be in there and he yeah. gets a lot of target. He, he's he over the last three seasons, he's caught 74, 67, and 70 passes for yeah. 20 touchdowns. Right. And I so, think that's what you're looking for. That right? is what you're looking for. Plus, what, plus Bills fans, we have to realize this is this is the this is the hole that the Bills dug themselves in with their contracts currently. Yeah. So this is while you may not like the decision, this is because of the financial situation going on at one Bills Drive and a bunch of other things. This seems like the best option you have to not affect the rest of your roster. Mm-hmm. You're going to be paying a little bit of money for it. You're going to probably have to add another voidable year in order to prorate that deal so you can sign other guys. But you're getting a veteran wideout that has played with Diggs before, can give Allen another outlet, and it's basically another toy on this offense that you didn't have come playoff time this right. past season. Right. So and, I, I, and it covers you for a couple yeah, years. Right, exactly. And he's played over 750 snaps a, since 2016, every season since 2016, with exception to 2019. Played four. He, I think he only played ten games in twenty uh, twenty nineteen. But a very mm-hmm. dependable, healthy player, right? And this is I, I couldn't agree with you more. Make a Mark. move for Thielen. Make a move for. Th- oh, interesting. You guys, I, wild to think about, isn't it? Hashtag Nation. Leave your comment down below. What you think about Buffalo? Yeah. Bills. What's your solution? What's Getting your solution? A, yeah. If if you don't think Thielen, what's your solution? I think that's very interesting, Paul. That's. We're getting the band back together. I love that you you Dang. started off the whole episode with that. <laughs> well, there's we a lot beginning there, back. There were Go a lot ahead. of there were a lot of signs here, right? So we <laughs> talked about the Viking funeral, like we talk. Yeah, there are a lot of signs in the episode that we we're going to talk about. Adam He's Taylor. a poet. All right, ladies. Yeah, like, like like I said, give us your comments below. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We will be in the car next week. But a little bit of a teaser for you. Hope you guys have a little fun with this one. See you later.